Hello everyone, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to talk about the different types of slime molds that can be found. So there are basically two types of slime molds that is generally found. First, a cellular type of slime molds and second is the cellular type of slime molds. In this video, we are going to first talk about the acellular group of slime molds. So what are these? These are the groups which are mostly found around the dead and the decaying organic matters. They actually prefer to grow around the damp areas. So wherever moisture or water is uh, present in higher amounts, those are the areas which are favored by these type of acellular slime molds. They are mostly free living acellular slime molds which are uh, and these type of free living acellular slime molds they have been given a term which are known as plasmodium. These plasmodium they possess the, or they have branched veins. They are saprotrophic in nutrition that means they cannot make their own food. In fact, uh, they are dependent on the dead and decaying organic matter. So what happens is they uh, secrete out digestive enzymes from their body. So these digestive enzymes are secreted into the environment and into the dead and decaying organic matter present around themselves. Now these digestive enzymes break down the complex materials into smaller simpler substances. Now these simpler substances are now absorbed by these type of slime molds or acellular slime molds. So hence they are sap saprotrophic in nutrition. The plasmodium so under unfavorable conditions so when conditions are not favorable for the survival or for proliferation under these unfavorable conditions these plasmodium which we are talking about they divide into two types of perinating structures so what do we mean by this terminology perinating structures perinating structures are those type of resistant structures which actually survive years after years through vegetative means so this is a mode of survival under unfavorable conditions this can happen in two ways first they can form cyst. So what is cyst? Cyst is basically uh, it divides into small multinucleated fragments. Fragments are produced which have more than one nuclei. They are multinucleated and now each of these fragments they secrete a thick covering to form the cyst. So each of these fragments will secrete uh, a substance around itself which is thick and protective and each of these are known as cyst. Whereas the second type it is known as sclerotium. So what is sclerotium? The whole plasmodium which we are talking about unlike the cyst they do not fragment they do not divide. So what happens they secrete a thick covering around itself. So here what is the basic difference in case of cyst the plasmodium is breaking down into smaller fragments and each of this fragment is uh, forming a, a, a layer around itself. But here in case of sclerotium so what happens they do not divide and fragment instead the whole plasmodium or the whole organism secretes a protective covering around itself. Now let us talk about the different life cycles of the slime molds or the life cycles performed by the acellular group of slime molds. The first we are going to talk about is sporangia. So what is sporangia? These are structures which are mostly formed under unfavorable conditions. So what are these unfavorable conditions? If the, uh, if the cells have gone mature and they have grown old or if the nutrients are not enough for the survival of these cells what happens is the cells uh, pushes its cytoplasmic content towards one corner of or towards one side of the cell now this side actually bulges out now this bulge structure is known as sporophore later on this sporophore can divide or can form a new organism under favorable conditions next is by the formation of spores this is a common method spores we know they are very hard resistant structures so they have a very hard thick uh, covering outside itself so these spores are again formed under unfavorable conditions now when favorable conditions uh, come back again so they can germinate into a new organism the third life cycle followed by these type of organisms is termed as germination and sexual reproduction so this is quite interesting because the spores we are talking about if conditions are favorable now these spores germinate 
Now these germinated spores of the slime molds are, are given a term which are known as swarms, S W A R M, swarm. So these uh, swarms, what happens is they now fuse together to uh, give rise to a new individual that is diploid individual. This is a form of sexual reproduction. So in this video, we have talked about the acellular group of slime molds. We have discovered, uh, discussed about the characteristics and also the life cycles uh, performed by these type of acellular slime molds. I hope you have liked this video. Thank you.